Hello everyone, how are we all going? It's been a long time since I've actually posted on this channel. It has been a very, very busy couple months. But uh, yeah, I've recently pulled out my layout from under the bed and I'm getting it back up and in running order as I will be moving out of my house in the next couple weeks. So I don't know what's going to be happening with my layout, so I'm going to be making the most out of it whilst I still have it in my bedroom. But anyways, I'm here today to review this. So this is the Hornby Class 51XX Large Prairie. And so I picked it up about a week ago now. Um, I went to the hobby shop nearby me and then I saw these were dramatically, uh, well the price of them were dramatically reduced. It was roughly the same price as a uh, Hornby Terrier, like five, ten dollars more than a Hornby Terrier. So I was like, why not? I've got a terrier, but I don't have me a large prairie. And I've never actually had a uh, Greater Western Railway locomotive ever. So I'm like, yeah, why not? I think prairies look cool. Let's give one a go. So I picked it up, and I have run it about one or two times, making sure it's all working fine. And then I put it back in the box. So it's not the first time I've un unopened it, but I haven't, you know, actually looked at it in too much detail. So... Yeah, I'm excited to get into this and show you what this lovely loco is like. Alright, so I'll give you a look at the box and then we'll get this bad boy open. So here is the side. There we go. R3719 GWR Class 51XX Large Prairie 262 Tank Number 4154. So it is DCC ready. I have not put a chip in it yet, but I eventually will. But for this video, it will just be a DC locomotive. And here is the back. I'll get it all in focus for you. I'm not going to read this all out. It will take me a long ass time. So hopefully everything there is readable. There we go. And yeah, I think the only thing left to do now is uh, get it open. So there we go. There she is in her glass little box. Well, plastic cube I must say, but anyways. Here's the box. Here is There we go. Class 3151 slash 61 XX Large Prairie. So we'll have a quick look at that. It just gives you the basic things about, you know, where you should oil up, where you should well, fit the details, how to put a chip in, fitting brake rods. I think it's all pretty, pretty basic stuff. So I'll put this to the side and we'll get the prairie out of this cube of ice. So uh, let's do this. Slip this bad boy off, move you to the side. And so here we have, oh, this will focus. Got some brake rods, a coupler, a few other little details here and there. Not too much, but you know, there are a few things in there. It's a pretty basic little detail pack. So I'll put that over to the side, and now we have the exciting part. So I'll get this off, get that away, Might zoom in a bit, and there we go, there she is, the GWR Large Prairie, well the Hornby Large Prairie. So we'll uh, slowly take her out, I'll put her down. Alright, so here she is in all her glory, and as you can tell pretty instantly there is a good amount of detail on the locomotive. You see we've got these handrails around the front, these very intricate little things. On the top here as well, we've got the gold whistles. I wouldn't be able to tell you what these things are, but <laughs> they're there, so, you know, what more could you want? And if I angle it a bit more, it will highlight a bit more of the detail there. Come on, focus. It doesn't want to focus too much. I think it's focused on my hand. There we go. There we go. So there is some lovely, lovely detail on the top. None of it is metal, it is all just plastic that is painted. So the whistles there, they are just plastic, so I definitely shouldn't um, touch <laughs> touch those much at all, or ever, really. And at the top here as well, we can see that there is this little section that opens and closes. I'm not too sure what that is called, but that is another fine little piece of detail they have in it. But I think that is something they've been doing with a lot of the more recent steam locomotives, so it is almost expected for a lot of a lot of locomotives now, but it's not something you could ever complain about. 
You can see down here as well, there is some fine little pieces of detail. Um, I'll see if I can zoom in a bit more. Zoom in. There we go. So there is quite a nice amount of detail everywhere. So yeah, it really did beat my expectations, seeing as it was, I guess, pretty cheap for a for a prairie. I wasn't expecting too much, but I've really been blown away. And for my first GWR locomotive as well, the livery is absolutely gorgeous. I can't see any errors with the uh, with the livery. There's no little bad paint areas or you know unstraight lines or anything like that. It's all very clean, straight lines. The color itself, the dark green, is oh, really gorgeous. The lettering here as well is done to a very high standard. Um, if I run my finger along it very gently, there is some depth to it. Um, and there's little rivets as well you can feel going down the side of the cab there. Um, we do have the nice little number printed at the back as well, 4154. And whilst we're there, you can see a bit of the detail in the cab that is, you know, visible as you look through. So that detail there does, it has, does add quite a lot. It's a gorgeous amount of detail. And there is some more detail in the cab there, but it is next to impossible to actually show. <laughs> and so my one quarrel really with this locomotive is, if you look down here at some of the rods down there, specifically right here, the metal rods here, they are kind of black. They are covered in some black substance, which I'm guessing is some sort of oil that's dried up or something along those lines. But when I took it out of the box, the shiny silver rods were black down there, which is not the nicest sight when you open a new locomotive, but I'm sure if I go and uh, re-oil it and try and clean it a bit better, I'm sure I can get rid of that. But that was the one thing that kind of caught me off guard when I did open this locomotive. Um, seeing black rods is not exactly what you want to see. All right, here she is from the front. Um, there isn't a crazy amount of detail here. We do have the sprung buffers, which I don't know if that will be visible but I can assure you they are sprung. Um, there isn't too much detail down at the front there. I think in the detail pack there was a few things we could fit, but more than that, it is pretty simplistic down the front, but I personally love the front of it. Um, this, this being my first Prairie, it looks so unlike all the other locomotives I have that, I don't know, there's just something very gorgeous about it. So yeah, I'm very excited to get it running and I think I'll uh, do that now. So come with me and we'll get her on the tracks. All right, here she is on the tracks. She has been running before, so keep that in mind. And it is DC, so that will affect how it runs. But more than that, I think we are ready for it to, uh, well, get going. And I'll start by slowly increasing the speed and showing off some of the slow, slow speeds. So I'll slowly turn this knob up. There we go, can you hear that sound? I don't know how well the, the microphone will pick it up, but it makes a pretty loud humming. And it isn't currently moving, but I'm sure if I slowly move it up more. Oh, wrong direction. I'll try that again. There you go. She is moving. I don't know how well you can see that, but oh. there we go. So it is really good at slow speeds. It does have that annoying sound, which I don't know what that is. I will oil it up again, maybe that will, well not again, for the first time. And I will open it up and see what's happening, maybe causing this humming. But more than that, it does run very well at the lower speeds, which I cannot complain about one bit. 